Imagine an entitled parent trying to get a woman kicked out of a store because she's well endowed. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, Anne wants my little brother to give all his toys away to her son as he tops his class. My little brother is male, 12, and my aunt's son is 13 years old. My brother is deeply into music and fine arts, and his academics marks are average, however, scores excellent in math and reasoning sections. On the other hand, my aunt's son, as claimed by her, is an academic prodigy who comes to this world once in a millennium. Last week, we were traveling to our grandmother's place by train, and suddenly my aunt claimed the window seat on which my brother was sitting, citing the reason that her son is better in studies and topped his class. Over the period, she would always make claims that her son deserves much more love than my brother due to his academic prowess. Yesterday, she claimed that my brother should give away his toys to her son as a mark of respect for his great academic prowess. I think definitely call her out publicly in front of your brother. And if you're ever in a situation where your aunt is around, definitely keep an eye on them so they can't, like, do something sneaky they think is justified. Also, hi. I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below. That said, our next story is, my abusive father wants to meet his grandchild. I haven't seen my father since I was 11, I'm now 24 years old and 38 weeks pregnant, and I've been hiding that info from my abusive, manipulative father. He had no idea, but today he found out, and sent me a bunch of messages through Facebook about wanting to meet his grandchild. I only had him unblocked because I was hoping to get enough info to get him put in jail, or at least take him to court. At first, he thought I was just being hush about the whole thing, so his first message was normal. He asked why I didn't tell him and that he was excited to meet his grandchild. Mind you, he lives very far from me and has no money to be traveling anywhere. So I told him that he wasn't going to meet his grandchild and that I purposely kept this info from him. This man had made my life heck while he was around, and even when he left, he gave my mom something like $20 a month for three kids and child support. He physically and mentally abused my siblings and I when we were kids, yet argues that he never did anything and that my mom brainwashed us against him. In terms of emotional abuse, he never paid any attention to us never showed up to any events he said he would, and when he miraculously got a girlfriend, he started leaving us alone with her on his weekends just so that he could work. When he was around, we either had to do what he wanted or he was sleeping. Yet, if my mom tried to make plans that happened to fall on his weekend, then he would argue to heck and back about it being his weekend and wanting to spend time with us. Now, in terms of physical abuse, he did a lot of this in the name of punishment for a wrongdoing, if someone wants to physically punish their kids, that's on them. But he took his discipline way too far. If he caught me sucking my thumb as a child, he would hit me with the buckle part of the belt, or smack me hard enough across the face that I would fall to the floor. I broke a dish once and he slammed my head against the table. When I broke something else, he picked up the glass shard and poked me in the leg with it. He would punch my brother so hard in the stomach that it would make him sick. My mom wasn't spared either while they were married. She finally got away when I was five. But she didn't know about his abuse towards us because he never did it in front of her and we were too scared to tell her. But he choked her, hit her, etc. He got married to his girlfriend when I was 10 and a year later moved out of state with her. Me and my siblings and I tried to warn the poor woman but she had my father in her ear telling her that my mom was just jealous and that my siblings and I just didn't want him to be married to anybody but our mom. A year or so later she was back in our state and had divorced him. She contacted us once to see us in person. My mom and I were the only ones that went. After a year she looked so broken and was different from the lady I knew. He had started being terrible to her shortly after their move. When he ended up doing the same stuff to her too, she quickly got away from him. She apologized to my mom profusely for not listening to her warnings. So the same man, when I know for a fact he hasn't changed, thinks that he would get to meet and be around my child? As soon as I said he wasn't going to meet his grandchild, he blew up. I started getting messages about how he's going to take me to court for grandparent rights and that I have no right to keep him from his grandchild, stating that he helped bring me into this world and that if it wasn't for him, the child wouldn't exist either. I told him if he had the money to take me to court for a case that would be laughed at and thrown out, 
then I'm going to take him to court for the backlog of child support he owes. That shut him up on that line of argument. So then comes the Bible ranting and telling me I'm going to heck because my sperm donor is not only abusive but also the type of Bible thumping Christian who only uses the Bible for their own agenda. So I blocked him. He's never had my phone number, my email or my address, so he now has absolutely no way to reach out to me. Sadly though, my mom lives in the same house she started living in after she left him, and he knows that. So I'm a bit worried that if he pulls together the money to get here, then he's going to harass my mom. But she can handle herself now and would just call the police. My seed donor is broke and a coward. While he may be violent and willing to harass women, he's scared of men. Heck, he's been terrified of my tiny 87-year-old grandma, his ex-mother-in-law. She's the reason why he never did anything to my mom after their divorce. Luckily, she's still alive and well, and my mom lives with her to help around the house. I may not like my grandma much all the time, but I trust her to keep my mom safe. It does help that my mom is no longer scared of him and will stick up for herself now. As for myself, I'm not sure. Being far away from him, I might be all tough, but if he shows up to my door, I don't know what I'll do. I do know that my husband is 100% willing to pop him. I also know that my sperm donor will tuck tail and flee if he comes face to face with him though, because as stated above, he's a coward when it comes to men. It also helps that my husband is taller and has a good 50 to 60 pounds on him. Now onto the legal side, he absolutely does not have any money to try anything there. As for grandparents' rights, as soon as they read that he hasn't even seen me, his own daughter, in 13 years, they would shut that case. I'm not worried, but I do have documentation. My mom still has all the documentation from her own case when they were going through their divorce. I don't have much for what he did to my siblings and I, but I do have documentation from the few teachers who met him, along with a statement from a security guard from the school who almost had to toss him out a couple of times. Then there's the statements from the nurses at the school. I might not have told them where the injuries actually came from, but after talking to them years later, I learned that they had their suspicions, especially when they stopped after my father left. So thank you for all the advice I've been given, but I know I'm safe. I've got neighbors who know what to look out for, and I'm never really alone right now. And while I might panic the entire time if he shows up, I like to believe I'd hit him with the gun we have. As long as OP stays precautious and has plans for all the basic scenarios, they should be fine and I think it's pretty unlikely that this guy is going to go and try something. Bio Dad would rather spend money on drugs and eating out than feeding his own wife and children. So my mom told me another story about one of the crappy things my Bio Dad did when they were still married. And it's a little short but it's still awful. So my mom was a stay at home mom for the first 3-4 to four years of my life and then got a job working 10 hours a week part-time so she can take care of me and my half-brother who was 14 or 15 at the time. My bio dad owned a tattoo shop that apparently didn't have any money coming in. So my mom called my grandma, who's an accountant, to look over his finances and bills. When my grandma looked at it, the paper said that my bio dad spent $21,000 in four months. All the while, my mom was feeding us with a $3 budget a night. The bills were all for eating out at like sushi places and bars. The other part they found out later were for hard substances, like H and a certain white powder. My mom and grandma interrogated my bio dad, but he could just never explain where the money was going. He then banned my grandma from doing business with him, and that tattoo shop failed not long after my mom divorced him. Our next story is, Entitled Parent Ruins Christmas by Stealing My Son's Nintendo Switch. It's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, but for me and my family, it was ruined by my brother's wife, Entitled Mother 34. My wife and I have always had a strained relationship with Entitled Mother due to her tendency to be controlling and demanding. Not just with us, but with our entire family. It's caused a lot of tension and discomfort in the past. We had a family Christmas gathering where we organized a gift exchange for the kids. My 7 year old son was over the moon when he received a brand new Nintendo Switch as his gift. He was so excited to play it, but Entitled Mother saw the gift and immediately decided that her child, Entitled Kid, an 8 year old, deserved the console more than my son, stating that she couldn't afford to buy such an expensive gift for Entitled Kid during the holiday season. 
Entitled mother proceeded to try and take the Nintendo Switch away from my son right in front of the Christmas tree, even though it was clearly labeled with my son's name. She was insisting and causing a scene, accusing me of being a bad parent, and because she wasn't able to afford such a nice gift for her son, we should give him one instead. Despite the attempts of other family members to reason with her and make her understand that her actions were wrong, she refused to listen and kept trying to take the gift away from my son. My son began crying and screaming, but she didn't care. This all happened in the space of about two minutes before Entitled Mother stormed off, screaming about how everyone hates her and she's better off without us. It was a terrible experience, watching my son's excitement turn into disappointment and tears. The entitled behavior of Entitled Mother not only ruined the gift opening moment, but also the entire Christmas gathering for all of us. Family members expressed their disappointment and disapproval of her actions, but she didn't care, and it seemed like all that mattered to her was getting what she wanted, no matter the cost. Her actions only served to further damage the already strained relationship between her and our family proving that her selfish behavior knows no bounds and that she can't keep her entitlement in check during the holiday season. Our entire family has completely severed ties with her since Christmas, and despite her trying to reach out to apologize, I can't justify having her as a part of our life anymore. Our relationship was never great to begin with, and to me, this was the final straw. My son will always remember this Christmas as the one where his aunt tried to steal his gift. I'm just glad this was a situation where everybody seemed to call them out. Thank God this wasn't something where there was some faction that was like ganging up. Yeah, give the kid your switch. This next story is, my entitled mom made me develop abandonment issues because she kept threatening to leave me as a kid. As an adult, I can see this manifest in my relationships so often. I always have this fear that they're going to leave me or lose interest in me if I don't behave. My single mom used to threaten to send me to a kid's shelter slash orphanage if she was unhappy with me, which terrified me more than anything she could ever do to me. It's different as an adult, but when you're a kid relying on your parents, the thought of being alone and helpless is just awful. She would also threaten to send me to my father when she was upset, which became more and more screwed up the more I grew up, as I realized who my father really was. Looking back, she obviously wouldn't send me to my father, as he was a dangerous criminal, but these were only threats to keep me in line. She also wouldn't send me to a child shelter, but would only say so to scare me. I grew up constantly anxious about what I did and didn't do, always so quiet and obedient in case this is the day I'll get sent away. I thought she hated me and couldn't wait for the opportunity to ship me away to an orphanage and be happy without me. The thought of her not wanting me broke me every time I heard it. I've always been clingy, but the more I feared being abandoned, the clingier I got to family, friends, and significant others. You just hope that hopefully being able to talk about it and put down what they're thinking into words can in some way help them move forward past this. Our next story is, this was posted on a local Facebook page. Karen really annoys me when people want to downsize to a one bed but need a garden they have no kids and just a dog you don't need a garden at all take your dog out for a walk it's just selfish when people are out here needing gardens for their children to grow and play not for a dog that aside i'm looking for an exchange i've got a lovely tea which i've just redecorated and i've also laid new flooring throughout except the bedroom which i'm not sure if i'm getting carpet or laminate yet I need desperately a two-bed flat or a house with a garden. I have a one-bedroom flat at the moment and I'm forced into the living room due to overcrowding. So if there's anyone out there who really needs to downsize from a two-bed, then please get in touch and I can provide more information. Thanks. You gotta love when people are elitist about who can and can't have a backyard. I get it's difficult when you're living in the city or living in a place where the density is pretty high, but God forbid somebody who doesn't even have a kid or a dog wants a backyard. Our next story is, you are who I tell you to be, said by my mom. I, 27 year old female, got into it with my mother today, and I don't think our relationship will ever be the same after this one. To be honest, our relationship was always rocky for years, but I tried to make it better after moving out a few years ago. We got into it because my niece, 13, came out as a lesbian and she was mad because, well, to be honest, 
My mom's a homophobe, which got worse after I moved out because she became extremely religious. I said something like, oh, well, it is what it is, when she told me and she did not like that. She started going on and on about how, no, it's not. It's the devil working in her and I can't bring myself to see her again. Which shocked me because I knew how my mom is, but to just disown her only grandchild like that struck a nerve with me. I then said, so because a niece is who she is, you want to not see her again. You've been in her life since birth. How could you? She then skipped over that and said something like, Well, I'm mad because I told her that's not how we are in the family. And your sister pissed me off because, well, you and your sister are pissing me off because you're acting like this isn't a big deal. Niece isn't gay. She just thinks that because of something she saw on social media. She then went on to talk about how God made men for women and vice versa, saying that we're letting the devil work in our life. And then said, God made us all in his image, right? If homosexuality was something that he didn't agree with at all, then he should have been able to make it so it wasn't a thing, right? She tried to say that it was the devil, but I cut her off with, So you're saying that someone who devotes themselves to God, prays every day, worships and praises him in his name, is still letting the devil work through them? People don't choose to be gay, lesbian, etc. And niece is no different. She's still niece, and her preference and attraction doesn't change that. Then my mom said this, and it just hit that nerve that I tried to ignore for years. I'm all of your mother. You are who I tell you to be. Why did this strike a nerve? Well, my mother's been controlling over me for years. Growing up, it was on and off, but when I became an adult, she kicked it into full gear. Yelling at me, making me do things, controlling my money, not letting me drive, not letting me go anywhere hitting me, and basically did everything she could to make me feel like I was the size of a rice grain. Heck, just the other day she told me how I was different because I didn't ask permission to move out. Unlike my sister that asked, which I doubt by the way, I was 23, engaged, and tired of getting treated like I was nothing under her roof, so my husband and his mom helped me by moving me in with them. I can honestly say that if I stayed any longer that I would have probably have taken my own life. That one statement, and I realized that my mom wasn't just absent-mindedly controlling, she was fully in control of making me feel like an object. I don't know how to explain it, but it just made me feel worse. She then said, if this is how you're gonna be, then I don't want to talk to you ever again either. So I took a deep breath and said, Well, if it's like that, then I should tell you that I've been bisexual since I was 12 years old. And that never changed. She lost her crap. She hung up and texted me, my sister, and my niece in a group chat. Actual copy and paste. You three can just come over and stick a knife in my heart. Really, are you all trying to kill me? I'm so hurt right now. My sister said how not to bring my niece into this chat. And then mom continued... The devil is so busy, but keep on entertaining him. Listen, niece's mommy, I don't give a flying freak. There was some more, but she messaged me privately and told me to leave her alone, and this is where I'm at now. So, yeah, I came out to support my niece, and honestly, it felt good to stand up for myself for once. My anxiety is crazy at the moment, but I don't regret what I said or did. Unfortunately, I'm sure my mom will die on this hill. Small update, mom seems to have calmed down a little, but the first thing she texted me was a scripture and telling me to repent, which was expected. I decided not to poke the bull, so I was as honest as I wanted to be. I told her that I can say without a drop of doubt that God is pleased with me. Note, I'm not religious traditionally, but more or less a spiritualist. I basically believe that there's a little truth in all beliefs, even atheism because I've been blessed with joy that I haven't felt until after I moved away. I told her I loved her, but I was afraid of her for most of my life, to the point that I couldn't come to her for anything, just from the fear of her reaction. She then did the classic parent speech of how I was fed and clothed and how I should be grateful because she didn't kill any of us by being a mean mother and tried to justify her hitting and yelling at me by trying to make sure that I didn't ruin my life. Let me just say that I wasn't a classic rebellious child or teenager. She said that I was messy and always forgetful with things. So I guess that warranted a slap and getting choked? 
Never mind that I was going through mental health struggles at that point in time and all that, I guess. But she never had an answer for when I was grown and had a job and doing the right thing and still getting slapped for who knows what reason. I know for a fact that if I was in her presence, that I'd be getting my butt beat and not this we need to pray attitude. Going to go talk to my sister and niece now to see what they're up to and if they're okay. I'm just happy for OP that they've got other people in their family that are in this together with them. I'm willing to bet that they can lean on their sister and their niece and vice versa. Our next story is homophobic entitled mom tries stealing my water bottle. I've posted on here before, but lo and behold, I encountered another one. It's not surprising to me that this happened. I live in a red state, and the part of my town that I live in is overwhelmingly upper middle class conservatives. The kind of people who had Trump 2020 signs in their yard in March of 2021. You get the type. Now, I'm a fairly active person. I'm at the gym regularly and I've never encountered anything like this. I'm also openly queer and the water bottle that I bring to the gym shows that. It has several stickers on it, most of them bought off of Etsy or things that people have given me over the years. Most importantly for this story, I have a sticker that says trans rights on it that I bought when I came out a year and a half ago. Now, my gym routine is simple, but a part of it involves entering into these hallways that my gym has, where people work on mats and do bodyweight exercises. I do my routine and I'm about to leave when I hear that all too familiar ahem from behind me. Now, the hallway I'm in connects to the stairs, so I assume she came up them without me seeing. She's your stereotypical Karen, with obviously dyed blonde hair and a kid in tow. This is unusual. Like most gyms, the gym I attend doesn't let kids use the equipment until a certain age. For hours, it's 11 to use it and 14 to use it unsupervised. And this kid can't be more than 8. However, there's a classroom on this floor that teaches kids as well as adults. So I figure he's here for a class. She's wearing a shirt that says, No Way Vacay, which has nothing to do with the story, but I thought it was funny. I'm mostly confused as to why she's talking to me, to be honest. I turn to look at her, and the following conversation ensues. I said, Can I help you? Karen says, This is a family place, and I think you should keep that at home. I said, What? She rolls her eyes. Don't play dumb. That, she points at my water bottle, is unacceptable. I say, What? It's worth noting at this point that although I'm publicly out and use they them pronouns everywhere I go, I still present really feminine. In most cases, unless I introduce myself with my pronouns, people just assume I'm a really enthusiastic ally. There are many reasons for this, but most of them stem from my own insecurities about my physical appearance, so I won't get into them here. Karen says, you're not even old enough to know if you're gay or not. Talk to me when you're an adult. And with that, she leaves. I thought that was the end of it, and I would leave with a funny story to tell my parents when I got home, but I was so very wrong. Also worth noting before I get into the juicy part is that my 18th birthday is in less than two weeks. I'm almost legally an adult, so I would definitely class myself as old enough to know. I'm pretty young, but I'm not like a preteen still figuring my sexuality and gender out. I'm sure about it. Anyways, after she leaves, I leave my stuff behind to go grab a wipe to clean my mat so I can put it back. Given the title of the post, I'm sure you can see where this is going. I get back to my mat and my water bottle is gone. I panic, obviously. Homophobia or transphobia, I can deal with. It says more about them than it does about me. But I have pretty severe anxiety. And having any of my stuff touched, moved, taken, or basically changed in any way is a huge no-no for me. I put up my mat, grab the rest of my stuff, and head to find a staff member. I walk back into the wade room and I spot her immediately, and she's holding my water bottle. She's standing next to her husband who's yelling something at the worker that sounds along the lines of, My son should be able to use the machines. Age restrictions for safety reasons be darned. Don't you know who I am, yada yada. I walk over and tap Karen on the shoulder. She spins around and looks very smug to see me. I said, give me my water bottle back. It's my property. She says, you shouldn't have these things around my children. We're a Christian family and God says... I say my mom is a priest ma'am. I know a fair bit about what God says, and I don't think he would approve of stealing. 
She says, and what does she say about these things you've plastered on your belongings? I said she bought me some of them. I need you to give me my water bottle back. By now, the staff member that Ken was yelling at has noticed me. They said, what's the problem here, ladies? I say she stole my water bottle and I want it back. It's mine. Now, most of the gym staff have a vague idea of who I am. They don't know me by my name or anything, but I, my dad, and his parents are all regulars at this gym. They do, however, still treat me as female. Eh, what you gonna do? I'm leaving for college in two months, so shrug. They say, ma'am, you'll need to give her back her things. Karen looks pissed, but she doesn't actually object. She shoves the water bottle at me and walks off, leaving her husband and son to trail after her. I'm pretty visibly shaken. I hate confrontation, and I hate people taking my stuff even more. The worker gives me a brief, are you okay? And I say that I'm fine, just shaken. He nods and walks off to do his job. I leave the gym, pretty much too shaken to finish my workout, and tell my parents about it when I get home. I don't know if that worker had the clearance to do so, but I would have loved to have seen these people get kicked out of the gym. Considering this Karen pretty blatantly tried to steal stuff from another regular, that seems like a zero tolerance thing for a gym. Our next story is, an entitled father tried to get me kicked out of the store for having big breasts. So the only reason why the entitled parent in this story didn't go to prison was because I was 18 at the time, but the fact that this happened the way it did still pisses me off. So when I turned 18, I started working at a call center and often walked around the city a lot in order to avoid my toxic mother. Yes, I know what you're thinking, but I was safe and always had a form of self-defense. I was young but not stupid. Anyways, that year, I experienced another growth spurt and went from a C cup to a double D cup and I was getting a lot of weird looks when in public. As much as I hate to say it, I was pretty young and naive, so I never thought it was because of the way my body changed, but I preferred to keep my distance from people. One day, I decided that I was going to go to Walmart so I could pick out some yarn for a crochet project I wanted to work on while at work. We were allowed to crochet as long as we didn't avoid the calls that were automatically answered on our systems. While I was checking out the yarn, I noticed a kid who looked like he was 13 or 14 standing at the end of the aisle watching me. Thanks to my history of getting bullied and beaten up, I immediately grew cautious and started debating if I wanted to get my yarn here or go to the Hobby Lobby across the parking lot. Before I could make a decision, an adult man came up and started leading the sun off, so I started to relax and think that I was overreacting. That is, until the entitled dad came back. He says, excuse me, but where did you get your implants? They look so real. I say, excuse me? I was really embarrassed and shocked and I was already getting creeper vibes from this guy. He says, your implants. He waves his hand in front of my chest and gets uncomfortably close to me. Where did you get them? I was at a loss for words and didn't know if he was serious or just being a creep overall. At this moment, the kid came up and poked at my right breast and I instinctively smacked his hand away, not caring that he was a kid. I said, excuse me, but you really shouldn't do that, especially to a woman. It's not polite, and it's considered SA and SH. The entitled dad immediately got mad at me and started screaming at me to not touch his son. He said that it was my fault and that if I didn't want attention like this, that I should keep my fun bags put away. I was in tears and looking around for an escape, especially since the more the entitled dad yelled at me, the closer he got to me. He started telling me that there was no way they were real and that he needed to feel to know for sure. He even told me that I needed to let the son do so so he could learn the difference between implants and the real thing. Remembering the fact that I had my pepper spray in my bag for any occasion where I needed to defend myself, I usually had a knife too but that seemed a bit extreme in the heat of the moment. I pulled out the can of pepper spray and told them both to step back and get away from me. At this point, an employee turned the corner, having heard us yelling, and saw me holding the pepper spray. He freaked out and called for a manager before coming up and yelling at me, demanding to know what I was doing. Thanks to me being in tears, the entitled dad was able to butt in and started lying to the employee that I was seducing his son and pulled out my pepper spray when the dad had tried to come to his son's rescue. The entitled son immediately started agreeing with him, and the employee was already saying that he was going to call the police? 
while the dad demanded that me and my big breasts get kicked out of the store. Thankfully, at that second, one of my co-workers, a big burly guy who often gave me a ride at night, after hearing that I took the taxi home at night because my mother refused to teach me to drive, rounded the corner, leading a manager right to the mess. The manager demanded that everyone shut up and calm down, and when we had, he turned to me and asked my side of the story. I told them how the entitled dad insisted that I needed to let them feel me to see if they were real and how I'd already explained I wasn't comfortable and didn't want their attention. The entitled dad backtracked on his story and tried to defend himself and the kid saying it was all for educational purposes and lied that I had agreed beforehand. This is when my coworker got mad and pointed at the camera at the end of the aisle, reminding them that it would have caught everything. The entitled dad and entitled kid both went silent for a moment before making a break for the exit. The manager took off after them, yelling at them to stop, and my coworker berated the employee for threatening me the way he did. Of course, they got away. But the employee was fired, and I never went back to that store by myself, per my friend's request. Please, teach your sons to respect women and don't harass women. Plenty of us are insecure of our bodies and don't want the attention our bodies attract, and we appreciate it if you don't make things worse for us. Also, never assume that a woman's body is fake or that you're entitled to touch it. Isn't it sickening how OP's just trying to live their life and this sicko's trying to put the blame on them saying, if you didn't want this, you wouldn't dress like that. You would cover up appropriately. Makes you want to slap somebody like that upside the head. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.